Hello friends, this video on S-Block Elements Part 1 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. The objective of this lesson is to describe the general characteristics of alkali metals and their compounds. We'll also explain the characteristics of alkaline earth metal. Please note both are different, alkali metals and alkaline earth metals. We'll discuss this. We'll also describe the process to manufacture properties and uses of sodium, calcium, in fact most of the alkaline and alkaline earth metals, anything which uh, most of the important uh, uh, usage of alkali in alkaline earth metal. We'll also appreciate the biological significance of sodium, potassium, magnesium, calcium, right? So if you see these two are alkali metals and these two are alkali earth metals. So the first question that comes to our mind is what are S-block elements? So S-block elements are nothing but elements where the last electron enters the S orbital and that's why the name comes X-block means the last electron is in S orbital. If you see uh, the pink ones are the S-block elements. If you see the S-block has hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium, sodium, magnesium, potassium, calcium, all these are S-block elements. All these ones which are in pink color are S-block elements. These elements and helium also, right? But in this chapter, since we've already studied a lot about hydrogen in the past, in the last chapter, we won't be focusing on hydrogen in this chapter, we'll be focusing more on alkaline, alkaline earth metals. So if you see, the one in the, uh, the dark pink here is the alkali metals. And the one in the light pink is the alkaline earth metals. The blue is not neither alkali, alkali metals or nor alkaline earth metals, but it's part of S block elements. But we'll not discuss much about helium now. We'll be discussing more about these two uh, groups, alkali metals and alkaline earth metals. So the next question is, why should we start, uh, why should we study S block elements? This question we ask uh, before any chapter, why should we study this? So here if you see uh, most of the detergents, it is made out of elements from the S block element. The common salt, if you see, it's nothing but NaCl, and sodium is nothing but my alkali uh, metal, and that is nothing but my S block element. If you see the medicines and medicines, we use a lot of S block elements. In the manufacture of cement, we use S block elements. We'll discuss more about this. The plaster of Paris, the gypsum, there we use S block calcium, we use here. So this is a place where you use S block elements. When you are cooking, uh, you use baking soda to prepare pastries and all, right? Pastries, cakes. Then also we use uh, S block elements. Um, so S block elements are used. In fact, in our body also, uh, S block elements are used a lot to maintain the balance of uh, all the chemical compounds and for transportation of different um, uh, uh, nutrients across the body. So in, in our in biologically also S block elements has a huge uh, importance and it's good to understand uh, these things which we use our, which we use in our day to day life. So let's start with the properties of S block elements. So as I have told S block elements consist of uh, alkaline metals. These are my alkaline metals, the one in the pink, in the circle here. These are my alkaline metals. And then I have alkaline earth metals, the one in the light pink. These are my alkaline earth metals. And hydrogen and helium. Hydrogen we have already studied in the last chapter. Helium will not study in this chapter, we will study later. But in this chapter, we will be studying, uh, focusing more on alkaline metals and alkali metals and alkaline earth metals. This is alkali metal actually. It's alkali metals. And apart from hydrogen and helium, if you see most of the S block, all the S blocks elements are metals. but Hydrogen and helium, they are not metals. So we'll start with alkali metals first. So you see the alkali metals I have is nothing but lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, and so these are my alkali metals. And this is the picture of the alkali metals just for you to uh, visualize how things look. This is my lithium. This is how my sodium looks. This is potassium. I got all these images from Wikipedia. The rubidium and this gas. Francium is very, very uh, radioactive. So, these are the image of all this. If you see, this is all has metallic look, right? This is stored uh, 
the special containers that it should not react because it's reactive. Anyway, we will study more about uh, these things uh, uh, in this chapter. So if you see the group one periodic table consists of all these elements, lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, plankin, and these are called alkali metals. Please note only these elements, one, two, three, four, five, six are called alkali metals, but they are very important. As I have told, we have, we use these metals a lot in, the, in our day to day life. So it's good to understand these metals and we will study in deep about these metals in this chapter now, right? And why they are called alkali metals you must have wanted, right? Why, why alkali metals? Why not ABC metal? Why not PQR metal? Why they are called alkali metals? It is so because they form hydro hydroxides on reaction with water and they are strong alkaline in nature. For example, if you see sodium, if you react with water, H2O, it will form NaOH. And these hydroxides are very alkaline, they are basic in nature. They are not acidic, they are basic in nature. And that's why they are called alkali metals. And if you talk about the abundancy, sodium and potassium are most abundant. We will we'll discuss about these in, in a few slides, next slides, where we, we have a separate slide for abundancy of these alkali metals. And as I told, Frankium is very, very radioactive, it's highly radioactive and uh, the, the longest lived uh, life for this uh, isotope 223 Frankium is 21 minutes, half-life is 21 minutes only, very, very radioactive. And the general electronic configuration for these metals are NS1 and that's what I have told when I have discussed the atom chapter with I have told that when you uh, put in a group, there has to be something unique, right? So all these elements should have some unique properties. And that's why they're in one group and that's how the periodic table is arranged right you put you put all the elements with similar uh, the properties electronic configurations in same uh, group so here you see all the elements in this group or in the group one this is called group one actually yeah, group one they have the electronic configuration of ns1 and this is how it looks lithium sodium potassium rubidium cesium and let, same thing for uh, alkaline earth metals if you see. So alkaline earth metals, we have these six metals as part of alkaline earth metals, right? So if you see, they are all group two uh, elements and this is nothing but beryllium, magnesium, calcium, strontium, barium and iridium. Right? Let's start with beryllium, magnesium, calcium, strontium, barium and iridium. So if you see the structure, this is my, this is my beryllium, BE. This is my magnesium, this is my calcium, right? This is my strontium, this is my barium, and this is radium. This is how it looks actually. And they are called alkaline earth metal. Why they are called alkaline earth metal? Because their oxides and hydroxides are both alkaline in nature. Plus, they are found in metal oxides in earth crust. So they have this earth also added. So generally they are found in for example, calcium is found in calcium oxide form, right? Magnesium in forms MMG. So these are found in oxide form a lot in earth. So earth is also added to the name, right? Just to differentiate between alkali and alkaline or metal because if you see in both the cases, they give the oxides and the hydroxides of, the, um, the, of them are alkaline in nature, but there has to be a different name to differentiate. So one extra property with the alkaline earth metal is the oxides of these are found in nature in earth crust so they are called alkaline earth correct and if you talk about the abundancy we'll again uh, discuss this in the next few slides but calcium and magnesium are the most uh, uh, easily found uh, metals in this group right and they are nothing but fifth and sixth in abundancy ratio in if you talk about the earth crust we'll, we'll talk about this in details in the next few slides and the other ones are little rare strontium barium this uh, beryllium is very very rare it's the rarest of all very difficult to find and the electronic configuration in this case is ns2 right we see the electronic ns2 this is all about alkaline earth metals. this is just a bird eye view of alkali and alkaline earth metals we'll discuss these things in details in the next few slides so before we start, let, let's talk about the two different unique properties of uh, all um, the metals. The first is the diagonal relation. What is the diagonal relation? So if it, the, it has been found that, see typically as I told that elements in one group has to be has similar properties. 
So it is expected that lithium, sodium, potassium, right? All these uh, will have a uh, radium should have similar properties. Similarly, barium, magnesium, calcium, strontium, they should have similar properties. But it is observed that lithium and magnesium have similar properties. Similarly, beryllium and aluminium have similar properties. And this is if you see Dagna, the, the second element of a group. One has similar property to third I mean uh, third period element of group two. Similarly, the second period element of group two has similar property to third period element of group 30. So this is a diagonal relation actually. And we were the scientists were thinking why we have um, diagonal relations and they explored a lot and they have found the cause for this. And we will discuss more about a diagonal relation in the next few slides where we will discuss why uh, we have a diagonal relationship, right? So let, let's just, this is just for introduction to tell you that this kind of property exists where lithium instead of having similar property with sodium, it has similar property with magnesium and this is found experimentally, right? Experimentally they have found that the expectation was that lithium should have similar property with sodium, but it is found that instead of the, uh, sodium, Lithium has more similar properties with magnesium. And this type of relation is called diagonal relationship. And it is more because of the size and the charge ratio. We will we'll discuss more about this in the next few slides where we will discuss this in detail. Right? And also, please note here that this is observed only mostly in second and third periods only. It is not that uh, potassium has diagonal relation with uh, calcium. Right? That is not there. Or here, if you, if you see, you get gallium. Here, if you get indium, so it is not that magnesium will have uh, diagonal relation with gallium or sodium with calcium. That is not true. It is generally with second and third period only, right? Second and third periods only. Correct. So this diagonal, please note, this diagonal relationship is generally observed in second and third period element only. So after this, it is not observed. That's why I didn't. Uh, I mean, I didn't have a picture with all the elements. I had only second and third period elements. Also, one more uh, typical behavior or one more strange behavior they found is the anomalous behavior of the head element. So what they have seen is the head elements have extremely different characteristics. So if you see what is head element, if you see these are my second period element, right? This is the second period. My first period here will be hydrogen and here will be helium, right? This is my first period. If you see the second period element, the characteristic is totally different. And second, second period elements are nothing called the head elements actually. Just because the hydrogen and helium, they are one one, you just ignore them. The heads are basically the second period element. Please note the second period element, the head element, not the first period elements. And observe that. They have totally different characteristics. So if I draw here uh, lithium, sodium, here you get magnesium, you get aluminium, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, here you get iron. Right? So if you see here, these uh, lithium and sodium property will be different, barium, magnesium, the properties are extremely different. And why, why it is different? Because of smaller size of atom. These atoms are very small in size. These groups, the second period elements are very small in size. You have seen this, the size increase like that, right? You go down the group, the size increase in this fashion. So these are very, very small in size, very, very small in size. The second group elements are very, very small in size. And that's why they behave in a different manner. And they have very high ionization enthalpy. Why? Because the small size is so small. So it takes a lot of energy to pick one electron. Right? But this ionization enthalpy is nothing but energy required to pick one, take out an electron from the atom. Since the size is so small and the electrons are totally held by the uh, nucleus, right? So it's very difficult to pick one electron from this atom. And we have discussed this in the atom chapter where we discussed why the ionization enthalpy decrease and the trends of the ionization enthalpy and the size across periodic table. We have discussed in the past few chapters. So if you don't understand these concepts, please, I recommend you to watch the previous videos where we have discussed the atoms and the 
um, trends in the periodic table, right? And also high electron negativity because they want to uh, lose one electron and uh, become H plus, La plus, B plus. So that's why they have different properties. And the most interesting is the absence of vacant d orbitals. They don't have d orbitals here. But if you see the sodium, magnesium, they all have d orbitals. We'll discuss this when we'll discuss the structure, right? If you see the lithium structure, lithium electronic configuration is atomic number is 3, right? So it is uh, 1s2, 2s1. You see sodium, it is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3, s1. So the moment it comes to 3, they have the vacant d orbitals. So 1, 1 will have only s, 2 will have s and p orbital. The moment it comes to 3, it will have s, p and d orbitals. So these guys will have d orbitals, sodium, magnesium, aluminum, silicon. But these guys, they don't have d orbitals. That is also one reason why they have totally different in the properties. So if you are having a difficulty understanding s, p, d orbitals and ionization thalamus, please watch the atom video. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.